Good afternoon. Welcome to the Craft Desk. My name is Chris, and this is Fat Guy in the Woods Farm and Store. And today, we're in the store. We're going to talk about um, a lot of the crafts that I make for retail. Um, a lot of them are based off of these little tree rings. Um, for example, you've got tree rings that are this size. Um, it's a good solid size, works well for a lot of different projects. Some of them are thinner, makes it a little bit easier to, uh, to do something like hang this one on a Christmas tree as an ornament. Uh, if you paint something on it, uh, they can go up in size, next size up. Uh, it's a little bit thicker, it's got a little more uh, substance to it. Uh, this one is rough because I cut it with a chainsaw. These smaller ones, I usually use a chop saw. So just your everyday compound miter saw. You have to hold the branch in there very solid, uh, but you can make these rings using that pretty easily. Um, once you have the rings all cut, you lay them out on a table, you have a fan blowing on them for a couple of days, you flip them over and you have the fan blowing on them for a couple of days more. And that gets them to a, a certain level of dryness, especially these thinner pieces. Um, where it makes them easier to work. If you need to do a little extra sanding, um, it's easier to do that with them. Um, if you need to trim off a rough edge, uh, the drier they are, the easier it is for them to do. Um, the reason I use rings so much is because you can do pretty much any type of craft with them. Uh, for example, these little ones, like this, make a fantastic pumpkin. So if you add the right embellishments, for example, you've got a little bit of leaf here, uh, you got a couple little berries, um, a little piece of jute tied around a stem, which is actually a piece of cork. Um, paint them up orange and voila, they become a pumpkin. You'll note that I've got a flat spot on the bottom, which makes it easier for them to sit on the table. Uh, for example, of course, I got to hold it straight. So anyway, there's that. Another prime example is uh, our little snowman. We have a ring here, a ring here. This is a half a ring in the top part of the hat. Um, I don't know if you can see that. See if that helps a little bit. Um, also, you're going to have some berries, a little bit of embellishment, green. Uh, this top half, again, is a piece of cork that is just cut in half and then sliced down the, the middle to give it like a half round. And then a loop of jute. Um, this is a, a half of a ribbon that I cut in half, um, tied it on there as a scarf. And the back is held together using, um, basically, it's, it's a burlap ribbon. Paint it up, draw it up with a sharpie, and you have a nice, nice piece of uh, product here. Going the next size up, this right here, uh, this ring, again, sand a flat side on either side, do it up the same way. You have a pumpkin, piece of cork, some leaves, some jute, some berries, um, and you have a pumpkin. It's just a little bit larger. And you can expand. The larger the ring, the larger the pumpkin. For those same types of, uh, for the same size, you can make a centerpiece snowman. Um, on the top, we have, uh, let's see if you can see it very well. Uh, on the top, you have a hat. Again, that's a ring, a smaller ring on top of it. This is sanded flat. It's all glued together. You have a piece of green. You have some berries, uh, red berries, white berries. Uh, to make like the, uh, you know, what you would see on the side of a top hat. Um, piece of ribbon. This is the same ribbon I used on the other one. Only this is not cut in half. This is a full width. Uh, and this is painted on both sides. So you have one, two, three, four, five uh, rings of various sizes all glued together to make a nice little centerpiece. Um, and I sell this particular product for eight bucks. And it goes well. Some of the tools that I use 
um, for doing a lot of this thing is I use a belt sander to make uh, the smooth spot. If it needs a little bit of touching up, I use either a chisel or a fillet knife. And I use a fillet knife because, well, one is one thing I had in handy and it was really sharp and it's easy to keep sharp, easy to keep using. Um, and you can get that point in there if you need to for some particular reason. Other tools that I use, uh, this is pretty much all the paint brushes I use. Um, I use this type, which uh, I guess is more along the lines of a makeup brush. It works fantastic for painting um, the color on the inside of the ring. Uh, easy to control, put enough paint on there and you can kind of roll that piece of paint around uh, to make the sharp edge on the inside. Um, for the other detail work, I've got a small bristle brush. This is flat um, and I cut it down to make it a little more stiffer. Uh, this one is basically the same thing, only I cut it at an angle. Um, and I know you're probably not seeing these very well. It still doesn't help. And then I've got this kind of brush. It does a pretty good job of just all over getting the paint on there. Other tools uh, is a Sharpie. In order to do a nice sharp edge um, with the painting and basically set your base design, a lot of times it's easier just to draw it on with a Sharpie and then paint up to the edge of the Sharpie. That's the easiest way to do it, works really well. And then you can go over the edge again in case you went, you know, didn't paint inside the lines and go over the edge again and sharpen it up again with a Sharpie. A lot of what I use for embellishment is called picks. You can pick these up at um, Dollar Store, Dollar Tree, um, Walmart has them. Uh, just different things. Um, this one is the flowers and these just pop off. Um, pop off, glue it on your piece. Uh, a lot of times you can cut them in half and use just the half of it. Uh, here are some of the leaves that I use. Other types of picks contains leaves like this, leaves like this. So you get all kinds of different picks with all kinds of different styles. Uh, another uh, flower pick is this. Um, there's a couple what's left over from uh, picks for the berries. Uh, these are the white, uh, white berries. I have some robins that are the same size that I use for some of the Christmas stuff. Um, this is the fall berries. Uh, again, you can get a whole pick full of them. This one came with berries and some leaves. So it's got uh, like a three-point leaf on here. Again, you pick them up at the dollar store, Walmart, whatever, and then you just tear the picks apart and use them as needed for your projects. The nice thing about rings is that you can do pretty much anything with them. For example, uh, you can use a large ring and this is one the, uh, that my wife made with rocks and little twigs. Basically makes something similar to the Tree of Life. And it's just a large ring. In keeping with our current theme, large ring as a pumpkin. We've got the beads, we've got the cork, uh, we've got the leaves, and a big ring painted orange pumpkin. And then you've got these type of rings. Now these are pretty cool. Um, it looks kind of rough, but uh, there's people who will take these and fill the insides full of epoxy. Um, do a number of different things with them. I mean, these, these are just simply cool just to look at. Uh, I've actually seen something like this just hanging on the wall as is. Uh, I took one of those and I started putting together a wreath. Um, thankfully, my wife finished it up for me because what I had was starting to look pretty bad. Uh, but she took basically the same thing, or I took the same thing, mounted the wreath, the, uh, wreath frame to it, and started to embellish it. Um, and the circle in the middle, the, the rotted out portion, worked really well with a couple of vowels. Looks fantastic. It's beautiful. This will sell for $45. So a lot of you are going to be looking at this uh, video as just basically craft projects. 
uh, that you can do at home. And by all means, I fully recommend that you do. These are a lot of fun. Um, I make them for home. I make them for the store. Uh, I make them for friends and family. Uh, it's something that I get quite a bit of enjoyment doing. And so there it is. And that pretty well covers a lot of the ring stuff. Uh, there's uh, a lot of other projects I will make with the rings. Uh, but for now, that's what I have in handy, and that's what I've got to display. Uh, other tools that I use, or I've got ribbon. Uh, if you're going to use uh, this sparkly ribbon, just expect that you will find glitter everywhere, uh, including uh, even with a full beard. My wife was finding it on my face two or three days later. Staple gun. There's a lot of different varieties. I've got an old ancient Stanley. This thing is probably older than my daughter. Glue gun. It is probably the biggest thing you're going to use. Um, I recommend getting a good one uh, simply because the cheap ones that you can get have a tendency not to stay hot as you're shoving a lot of glue through it. And when doing a project like this, this thing probably used half a stick of glue. Um, and I had to shove it through at a pretty good rate and hold all these pieces together to keep them nice and tight and for them, to, you know, until they cool down. Um, so get a good glue gun if you're going to get a glue gun. Other than that, nope, I forgot my canvas or a big old roll of burlap. Um, we use this in making the reeves. Um, I use it with some of my other projects. Uh, it makes a good backing if you need to hold uh, something together. For example, the back of your snowman. Holding that together uh, just gives it a little bit more strength and stability. So, that pretty well covers it. Uh, thanks for watching the video. Uh, please subscribe. Um, please like and share in any and all social media that you have to help me get the word out.